everything. So that was fine. And then we saw the show, and the show was awesome. Hell of a review. All right, where are we here? Are we up to Mania already? I just want to hear your review of Mania since you're already here. All right. Mania was a hell of a show. Um, You could argue which was the... Uh, I'll just go over the... I, I, of course, do not have notes since I was there, and I was trying to tweet out, but I was not getting much of a signal. Uh, I, I tried to tweet out how great the Battle Royal was. Ba how great the Battle Royal was. I had a great signal the whole time. You just should have gotten to their Wi-Fi. It was free Wi-Fi. I see. And it was great. That's one good thing. I'll say that's one good thing about the Superdome. Free Wi-Fi, and it worked great. So, uh, anyway, I, I tried to send out a tweet about how great the Battle Royal was, and that tweet just disappeared into the ether. And the next time I check... Uh, there's someone saying, boy, I bet Brian Vinny going to bury that Battle Royal. Who would say that? I don't know. Battle Royal was awesome. The finish was great. The finish was great, and a lot of it before that was great. We will go match by match. The opening half hour was the three biggest stars of the modern era, Hulk Hogan, The Rock, and Steve Austin, all in the ring at the same time, cutting promos. Everyone was happy about this. Everyone was very, very happy. And uh, they all talked about how great they were, how great the fans were, how great WrestleMania was, and then they all left together, and everyone was happy. Triple H and Daniel Bryan, excellent match. A long match that felt like it deserved to go uh, for a long time. I mentioned uh, before going into this that I thought the uh, this was the real main event and whatever happened in the title match is going to be anticlimactic. And that may have been uh, uh, going a little far. But I will say the reaction when Bryan pinned Triple H at the end with a knee strike finally you know, when you look down on the stadium floor and there's seats and then like behind the seats, there's a stadium wall and in between there's a big space, 20 yards or so, 10 yards maybe. But uh, when the ref counted three, suddenly everyone didn't just jump out of their seat, but people were so filled with joy, they began to sprint back and forth in that open space, just running everywhere, high-fiving strangers, hugging each other, boundless joy. And, of course, unbelievable yes chance over and over again all night long. So, really, by the time this match is over, I thought, you know, I've already got my money's worth. Whatever else happens, I can't complain. Shield squashed the New Age Outlaws and Kane. Only notable because they managed to do a double triple powerbomb for the finish. And, of course, we later learned Billy Gunn got injured. But everyone loved this, too. The Andre Battle Royal was awesome. As we usually say, most battle royals suck until you get down to like the last four guys. This battle royal, they actually did stuff where they would have uh, 30 some guys or 20 some guys, or however many were in there. Most of them would clear off to the sides and leave a little bit of room, and three or four guys would get to do something important that everyone could notice. So it wasn't just mad chaos. They had a spot where Cody Rhodes accidentally eliminated his own brother and, and then got knocked out. They had a uh, Kofi Kingston doing his most, this I think was his most ridiculous elimination tease yet. He got thrown over the top rope in the corner. His feet came down on the steps. His ass came down on the floor. This, of course, was not an elimination. How he pulled this off without twisting an ankle, I have no idea. He got back in only to later get eliminated anyway. And then finally at the end, it came down to Cesaro and the Big Show. The overwhelming favorite against a guy who I guess was not even supposed to be in the match at first. Crowd was... Madly in love with Cesaro. Only wanted to see him win. Booing Big Show for everything he did. And then finally Cesaro just picked up Big Show for a body slam, carried him over the ropes, and dumped him. A great elimination. And Big Show gave him a handshake. Cesaro posed with his new trophy. Everyone loved him. A massive success this was. John Cena versus Bray Wyatt. The only two things I've uh, gone back to watch from the show on the network are this and the finish to the Taker match. I shouldn't say, but by this, I specifically mean Bray Wyatt's entrance. I was not at the WrestleMania when uh, Triple H faced Undertaker, and he had the Metallica music, and there was all the guys with the shields, and then Hunter came up in the silver armor under the bright spotlight. I can tell you on TV, that looked like the coolest entrance ever. I think Bray Wyatt's entrance may have topped it. The voodoo dancing, the live music, the singer in the voodoo makeup with a backup band of guys wearing uh, Black Plague death masks. All in darkness, all coming out. And the key to this, all of that was captured very well in video. 
What was not captured well on video, and this is not necessarily their fault, because they mic'd it for the, for the uh, musical performance. But imagine all of this, and 70-some thousand people are all clapping in unison. This was so creepy, and so awesome, and so incredible, and so amazing. Maybe the coolest thing I've ever seen live at a wrestling show. This was great. Match itself. <coughs> Excuse me. I am going to have to go back and watch this at some point, because... What I tweeted out was that it was it was a slow and went too long, and I got about a, a ton of feedback, and ninety percent of it was passionately disagreeing with me, ten percent passionately passionately agreed with me. But uh, the only note I will sh- share here was that Brutal Bob just told me learn how to work. He was not happy with me for that opinion. It did tell a good story, as I said. The story was that Bray's goal was to turn John Cena heel. By giving him many chances and many reasons to uh, resort to extreme to resort to extreme violence, Cena always turned them down. He would not uh, hit Bray when he was down. He would not smash Bray with steps. He would not smash Bray with a chair. And Bray was getting more and more frustrated. And then finally, at the end, Cena just pinned him anyway. Which I thought kind of threw the whole thing away, but whatever. So they will keep feuding. I would think with the the, the theme of the show. Uh up and down the card, really, was that the the younger guy beats the older guy. I think this was the one exception. And, well, I guess they just wanted Cena to win, to send the kids, kids, to send the kids home happy. I'm talking for a long time uninterrupted. Yeah? Yeah. I've reviewed the show nine times. I know you have. All right. Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker. This was also long and slow. And by the standards of Undertaker WrestleMania matches lately, not particularly good. Well, I said earlier today, I will jump in. All right. To be fair, the guy suffered a concussion very early on. That is true. And I actually feel really bad for him because I don't know if the match would have been a classic had he not suffered the concussion. My guess is no. But I've seen plenty of guys that have suffered concussions early and just had horrendous matches. And I don't know what he had left in him, but he'd been wanting to do this for years. And and this was his chance to do what probably was his retirement match. It's unconfirmed. But I, I did talk to people who, I mean, they think for sure this is his last match. Yeah. And uh, and to go out there and in your last match, you suffer a concussion and you end up having a really bad match and the streak gets ended, that's too bad. Yeah. So, Taker kicked out of two F5s and then Brock hit a third one. And I thought, wow, Taker's going to kick out of three F5s? And then a funny thing happened. He didn't. Brock covered him. The ref counted three, and the match ended. And uh, this, JBL made the comparison on Raw. I can only imagine this was similar to Bruno San Martino losing to Ivan Koloff. Just stunned silence throughout the arena. No one really cheered. No one really booed. They were just blown away and, and, and flabbergasted by this. And Brock and Heyman left. And Taker did his best to uh, milk his exit for a big reaction. Never really got one. I think maybe because the fans still could not believe what they saw. And in fact, the Undertaker chance did not start did not start in earnest until well into the next match. So yeah, we saw history, everyone. The biggest win in a mania. One of the biggest wins in mania history. The ending of the streak when Brock Lesnar beat Undertaker. Girls came out. People chanted for Taker. Went on for a while. Literally, all I remember about this is that AJ tapped out uh, Naomi, I believe, with the Black Widow. And she mocked Vicky Guerrero. Who I, Was this Vicky's last show? I don't know. Dave, I, Dave, I, Dave said that at one point. I have heard that she is... is uh, I, I was told she's done maybe this week, but I, I don't know. Yeah. I guess we'll see. That's a weird way to go out. I would figure they would do something for her. Yeah, there's zero payoff other than just staring a hole through her. By the way, AJ. I watched, uh, I, I was on the airplane today, and uh, I, honest to God, this is no exaggeration, and I'm, I'm, I'm positive that the number I'm giving is low. I met at least 250 to 300 wrestling fans or more since uh, Thursday. Um, I'm talking like, talk to them for a period of time, not just like ran into a people person with a shirt on. Uh Absolute madness, the number of people that I, I ran into. Never, nothing like this ever. I mean, 
I, 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 it is, it, whenever I was in an area with wrestling fans, I mean, there was someone every five feet. It, it, I, I couldn't even believe it. But I was on the airplane today, and uh, sure enough, someone came up. Oh, hey, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and then I find out everybody in my row in the row next to me had also been at WrestleMania. And everybody's talking about the show. And, and uh, I went back and watched The Undertaker finish. And it was funny because of all the people that I talked to, and I talked to a lot of them about The Undertaker, because that's all anybody would ask when you, when you saw him, oh my God, what did you think of The Undertaker? And it appeared to me that we all had the exact same goddamn memory. And it was a memory that was not true. My memory, and, and all of these other people I talked to seem to have the exact same memory, that Brock hit this F5, and the Undertaker kicked out, and and it looked like a botch, and they didn't ring the bell. And like person after person had the same memory. I don't know what it was. I don't know why. But I went back and I watched the match, and Brock Lesnar hits an F5. He pins the Undertaker clean as a sheet. Michael Cole calls it as the finish. They ring the bell. And there is no doubt in anyone's mind what happened. That is so completely different from my memory and the memory of so many people that I talked to there. It was a strange, it's like the Thunderbird photo. We're all remembering the same thing that didn't happen. I don't know if there was like, we were all in an alternate universe at the time. I mean, did you have that? Did you hear the bell? Did you see a kick out? I don't remember hearing the bell. Uh, I definitely did not see a kick out. I was quite certain the ref had counted three and Brock Lesnar had won, which did make I, I, I it did make me I don't want to say laugh, but all the feedback afterwards was either a something went wrong, or b the much 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 funnier theory Brock shot on him <laughs> with an F five, or uh, c the the most reasonable of these that perhaps Taker called an audible literally at the last minute. None of these happened. No. Uh, that, that's the only one that is, uh, like I said, that's the most plausible one, but no, from where I was, I just, I just Brock pinned, pinned him and all I could do was go, huh? Here's Zach already on Twitter. Funny. I had the exact same memory until I went back and watched it. I guess we were all just hoping that it was a mistake. It, it may have been something where your mind refused to accept what it was seeing and created your own reality. So you could, so you could, to keep your sanity. I mean, it's funny because it, everybody I mean, I was standing there just looking around, and, and I talked to people. You know, I talked to people at the hotel. I talked to people at the plane. I talked to people here. I talked to people there. All saying the exact same thing. Man, I thought for sure it was a botch. Then you go back and watch it, and it's like, this was, I mean, if you watched it on television, there was absolutely no question what happened. None. Like, absolutely nothing. But, man, at the time, it was like it, everyone thought the ref screwed up or Undertaker forgot to kick out or or he kicked out too late, or or something got fucked up. It's just crazy. The, the memory versus the reality is just like, it's crazy. And no, this is not an audible. He did not uh, shoot on him. I know that there's like a five-page thread on the board about when people knew. I'm telling you as a fact. Remember we were on the walking tour? Were you there when I got that text? I don't remember. I got a text on the walking tour. It was like it uh, it was 3 Eastern, which would be 2 New Orleans time. And and uh, somebody there texted me, and they just said, be ready. And I was like, what? And they said, uh, send me the link to the odds page. <laughs> and so I sent them the link to the odds page, and then I was like, what's going on? And they wouldn't tell me anything. And so, and so, uh, later, uh, by that time, there were already people that, that knew. And so, and so they were checking to see if the odds had swung yet. And the odds actually didn't swing until I think about five o'clock, uh, Pacific or, or when the show started, whenever the show started. So the idea that nobody knew, it's just not true. The odds all, they did a big swing. There were people that knew about the finish and they knew earlier in the day. This is not like I'm making this up or someone's telling a story. I mean, it, this is a fact. People knew and they went and they made some big bets and some people won a lot of money. 
This is not some sort of secret. But uh, I didn't. I didn't know. I was as shocked as anybody when it actually happened. But uh, later, I it was explained to me, and it all made sense. And and I saw the odds, and there you go. What I'm surprised is that nobody, nobody. Uh, I mean, the odds. There was a big swing, but I didn't hear anything about it until after the thing happened. So it's a very interesting day. That was the biggest surprise in wrestling in a long ass time. I'm pretty sure that's legitimately the biggest upset in Mania history. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it was a newsworthy day. That is true. Had a wacky skit backstage where Hulk Hogan and Mr. T, after all these years, finally shook hands with uh, Roddy Piper and Paul Orndorff's amazing mustache. I got a I got a T story. So T does his Hall of Fame deal, and and Kane has to come drag him to the back. And so I was talking to somebody yesterday after the show, and I was like, "How's T?" And they were like, "Oh man, you know, I I saw him right after the right after his Hall of Fame speech. He was all smiles backstage. Seemed like he was fine. Didn't seem upset or anything like that. And then you know he's I I, I he came out at at uh, WrestleMania the next day, and you know T seemed fine. Apparently T is now burying the company on Twitter. I see. So now that he's gone, he's pissed. Let's find Mr. T's Twitter now. There's an old episode of Raw. I think it, was, it's the, the, it has the same Steiner's match we reviewed before from like 93. IRS is about to squash uh, Scotty Too Hotty. <laughs> Pretty impressive. All right. Main event was, of course, Daniel Bryan winning the championship in the three-way, which we all knew he was going to do. And yet 20 minutes into this thing, they were teasing near falls <laughs> that had me legitimately fearing for my life. In the Brian match? Yes. Sorry, I was reading T here. The 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 one, I believe, uh, they tossed Brian. It was out of the, the RKO. Ring. The RKO was one. There was one other that did one, but yes, uh but yes. Orton RKO Dave and made a cover. And for a second there, I thought I was gonna be in the middle of a seventy thousand man riot. Dude, after I got stuck in that bottleneck, I was I was like, if if Daniel Bryan does not win the title here tonight, everyone dies. I'm not getting out of this building, basically. Mm. It would have been bad but then of course after undertaker lost it was like there's no way there's no way undertaker and daniel bryan are losing on the show especially after the fury and the and the and the heartache and the tears after the undertaker was beaten this really happened everybody i'm not making this up anger outrage tears and people storming out of the building not like millions of them or anything like that you know probably just a few dozen but it happened people it walked crazy. out of wrestlemania because the undertaker lost let's think about that for a minute by the way this is t He's written about 9,000 tweets, but among them are, I am very disappointed and saddened that you could not hear the rest of my speech. I was told my speech went too long. Really? Seriously? And then he quotes Matthew. All the inductees were told the fans want to hear our stories, to take our time and enjoy the moment. But I was something. I don't even know here. I will post the remainder of my speech for you to read. And he was deeply moved by the outpouring of support you showed after my Hall of Fame speech was cut short. Wow. Poor T. Yeah. So, this match was also excellent. Brian was selling his shoulder after Triple H had attacked him earlier in the show after their match. And the uh, <laughs> did not do a lot early on. Then they did a spot where they hit a powerbomb RKO combo through a table. Cannot see this clearly from my seat up in the sky, but apparently Orton landed on a monitor and sliced his back open. Nearly killed himself, yes. They uh, brought out the stretcher for Brian, the back brace, the neck injury, the whole thing. As noted, Bridget is not a wrestling fan. She was there because I was. And uh, she was actually very disappointed when uh, we got to our seats. Uh, I bought our seats from uh, our good friend Peppermint Fatty on the board. And he, uh, I was under the impression that he had bought a larger group of them. And so we'd be sitting together. And then, of course, we got to our seats, and there were nobody. There was nobody there we knew. And then, of course, we got moved anyway, so it didn't matter. But so she was uh, bummed that she would have to watch the show and not have the other girls there to talk to. But she's watching the show, and this injury happens, and they bring out the cart, and suddenly she's very concerned. Bridget is the uh, lifeguard of the pool, uh, uh, lifeguard trained. Uh, you know, she's very concerned about safety, and she is horrified that we may have seen a tragedy befall, befall us uh, before our eyes. And they began to wheel him out. And she had been leaning forward, like clutching her hands under her chin, paying rapt attention. Then she just turns to me and says, they're wheeling him out way too slow. And I said, yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> so she smartened up. And, uh, of course, Brian fought his way off the stretcher and went back into battle. And, uh, you know, he tapped out Big Dave. People cheered. It was not 
by, by by the slimmest of margins, it was a smaller reaction than than the than his win over Hunter earlier. Um, but it was still a, a great moment. I actually thought it was the biggest pop of the whole night. Did you? Yeah, they lost their shit. Well, they did, but for they, lack of a better term, they lost more shit earlier. I don't know. Uh, 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 Arguable. And part of it was, uh, you know, for some of these people, they've been in this building for six hours, done a lot of cheering, seen a lot of history. They were tired, but uh, regardless, it was a very, very big reaction. And they had the pyro and the confetti and his music playing and 70,000 freaks screaming yes, yes, yes over and again, over and over again. He said some, said hi to some people I don't know, brought a little girl into the ring, gave her a hug. A great time was had by all. His and- sister. Okay, there you go. And uh, he, he finally left. I don't know who the little girl was. Right. I would, I would guess his niece. I sure. Don't, I don't know. I was I was surprised Bree didn't come out, but it's not my show. So uh, left with both belts. And I can tell you, I've been at a lot of wrestling shows, a lot of uh, theater, uh, a lot of sporting events. And there's always the, the a certain percentage of the crowd will, will leave either before the finish or immediately at the finish to beat traffic. No one left. Everyone was still in the Superdome, except for those people who left after the Taker match. Everyone who was still there stayed to chant yes as long as they could and cheer for Daniel Bryan as long as they possibly could. And finally, Bryan went backstage, and the confetti stopped, and the music stopped, and the lights came up, and Lillian told us the show was over. Please go home. A lot of people just stood there for a while, (laughs) just taking it all in. And then finally realized there was nothing else going on, and they had to go. Awesome show. It was an amazing show. It was awesome. Show was awesome. There's, I've been to, we count here, I think this is my fifth WrestleMania. There's others where I only remember one or two things. There's about eight or nine moments from this show I'm going to remember vividly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this was a classic. The show was a classic. The whole weekend was just, uh, it was just the best. I didn't, uh. I didn't get a chance to, I did a lot of shows, so I didn't have a chance to go to a lot of events, uh, but I did go to a few. I got to hang out with people. I mostly, I mostly got to enjoy myself during the day. I didn't get to enjoy myself a lot at night. We went to the uh, Superior Grill, which uh, was right next to the hotel. It wasn't really all that superior, but it was a grill. That's a fact. And uh, I did enjoy that. I got uh, essentially three days in a row, I had to get food delivered at night because I had to do shows. And by the third night, I swear to God, I called and I said, uh, uh, I want an order to go. And she goes, Brian. I said, yeah, <laughs> Hampton in. Yep. Swear to God. I, and so I got my, uh, same meal all three days. And, um, I know I must say this. I know that a lot of people are waiting for me to come on here and rant and rave at the board about all these terrible things that you said about the shows that I did with with Dave and Mike. But I don't have any idea why people would expect me to be angry at the listeners for that. The audio quality, there were a lot of problems. And and I, I do not have any problem with people when they when they have valid complaints. I only have problems when you have ridiculous complaints. This is a very valid complaint and, and it is something that we are working on for the future. I know people are, are, are very skeptical of this idea that I, I can't yell and scream. I did like the guy that goes, I don't understand how, how talking in a hotel room is, is, you know, have you ever heard me do a show? I'm incapable of talking when doing a show. It is yelling. We, we shout the entire time. I, I've tried very hard to not yell, but it, believe me, it would be the most boring goddamn show if I just sat and talked about it. I've got to, I've got to give you my passion, my soul. And so, yeah, I get yelled at in hotels. And, uh, and it was embarrassing because the guy came and yelled at me in his underwear. Really? I'm not making this up. Banged on the door. I opened the door. A dude in his underwear. And he didn't put on pants. So, yeah, I, I, uh, and, and the, the business center was closed. Trust me, everybody. I tried. I try all, I try so hard. And shit happens. So this was what ended up happening, and uh, we've got some ideas. We've got some uh, solutions for the future, and uh, and there was audio. I know, and you know, one thing I will say, I will yell the board for one thing, and it's not all of them, it's just a few people. If I do a show with Ed, and you listen to the show, and you think the show sucks, 
You are welcome to rant and rave to your heart's content. But if I do a show with Ed and you go three pages bitching about it and you didn't listen to one moment of the show, then you can kiss my ass. At least listen to the show before you complain about it. Because Ed actually, you got to think about this. Ed's been waiting his whole life to do the show, to be a host on the show. And so Ed was on his absolute best behavior. Whitney was in the room and she was like baffled. Like, who is this guy doing this show? He was like, he was he was quiet and he was thoughtful and he did a great job on the show. So I'm glad that people eventually listened to it and went, oh my God, Ed did a great job on the show. So I, I do not, I, I ignore the comments completely when you bitch without listening. To but I will tell you a funny story about Ed doing the show. I don't know if I've told this on the air yet, but uh, I, I, I had a headset for Ed because a lot of people have a really hard time using a microphone. It's like a foreign object. They don't are, they understand. I, I've yelled at you a million times, Vinny. Put your mouth next to it. You know, talk into it. Don't look around the room or turn your back to it. So I got a headset for guests. So I'm like, Ed, put this headset on and we'll do the show. So Ed puts it on backwards. I was like, Ed, turn the headset around so that the microphone is in the front. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, So I, I hear him putting them on. I'm like, all right, give me some audio. Ed, Ed, give me some audio. Talk like you're going to talk. Is Ed? I was like, dude, I can't hear you. I turn around. Did you see Ed during the trip? Yeah. He's got the fucking microphone buried in his beard. Excellent. Like, just six feet into his beard, completely just stuffed in there. I was like, Ed, take the microphone out of your beard and put it in front of your mouth. He's like, oh, okay. So he finally got it right, and it was a good show. But anyway, that was the story of that. And uh, I have no other stories. I had some good food. Uh, Peppermint Fatty took me to a place where we had uh, French fries.